Welcome to another edition of Reaching Out. I'm Gregory Floyd, President of Local 237 Teamsters. With me, our very special guest is the mayor of Linden, New Jersey, Derek Armstead. Derek Armstead is the 14th mayor of Linden, New Jersey. His family lived in the city since 1926. He made history as the first black mayor of Linden, New Jersey. Armstead was elected to the Linden City Council serving the constituents of the fourth ward from 1993 to 2014. Since assuming office in 2015, the, um, the Armstead administration has established and stabilized taxes for five consecutive years in a row, having zero increases. And they have uh, established fast food chains. Linden has become a hub of employment and a home for many. June 2021, Linden uh, Police Department began deploying body cameras, technology for use worn by uniform and plain clothes officers. Armstead is a firm believer of putting children first. He started the Armstead Scholarship Fund, offering scholarships to graduating high school students and seniors. Uh, Mayor Armstead hosted several food distributions for Linden residents beginning March 2020. A job readiness program is be, was being offered uh, at the very young age. His grandparents, Linden Democratic uh, Councilwoman Jimmy Lee Armstead and Linden Democrat Committee Henry Creed Armstead taught him that government exists to serve the people, not just as privilege. Mayor Armstead, welcome to Reaching Out. Thank you, thank you. Glad you could have me. Yes, I'm glad. Now, I found you, before I begin, I found you at the Linden House Festival, where you had one of my favorite uh, DJs, uh, Louis Vega, perform. So that's what brought me out there. And he was impressed that the mayor was having this house festival. So tell us about the origins of your house festival. I believe that was the fourth one that you held. Yes, well, oh, a few years back, a um, gentleman by the name of Eric Clark came to me and he said he would like to have a, a house music festival. Um, and we had a number of different events in town. We just hadn't had anything quite like that. And uh, so I told him, listen, let, let's try it out. We'll give it a shot. And, uh, and we did. And it, the first year was a little slow, but we kind of built it up and built it and built it. And uh, now it's turned out to be one of the, um, I, I would say one of the top house festival um, house music festivals uh, throughout the state as we've, we've become renowned and known for our uh, our festival yes and and, and your food because I, I was there to get uh especially one of my favorite fishes uh, a whiting sandwich so that was good yeah oh yeah we have a number of vendors who come out every year uh, and they they do an excellent job with their food and um We've, we've become known for that as well. Uh, we have everything from ribs uh, to fish um, to uh, tacos, you name it. We, uh, we try to encourage people to come out and, uh, and support the event. And the people who come to the event support those vendors. Very good. So listen, how did you become the mayor of Linden, New Jersey? It's a long story. Um, if, if, if you could believe this, and I tell everybody, you know, pay attention to my journey. Uh, and, and you have to really, um, I tell people who are in power sometime, don't become bullies because sometime the very person you bully may come back and he may not run. He may decide to stay and fight. Um, you know, I had been in government, like you said, uh, since 1993, I served as a councilman. And um, quite honestly, uh, you know, when you get in politics, you're really excited. You have a lot of energy and you want to really uh, do the right thing. You want to add value to your city. You want to uh, bring up your community. You want to make sure that the education system is better, jobs and employment. All those things are very important when you become a council person. Uh, and at some point in my career, I began to question what I was doing as a council person. I, I came here with all the best intentions and I just didn't see the type of progress in my city that I thought should that, that we should have. And I decided that I was gonna, because I couldn't put time into my uh, career and be, a, and be a councilman also, I decided that I was gonna really get out of politics. And I think the only thing I wanted was one last thing, was a picture with all my children with, with my hand in the Bible being sworn in. And that was in 2010. 
uh, I, that, that was a position called council president pro tem that the most senior guy on council gets. So um, a week prior to the reorganization meeting, the um, top Democrat in town came to me and asked me, was I going to support him in his bid for mayor? And me jokingly said to him, well, I don't even know who's running. And uh, he, he, he was the council president at the time and he took it upon himself uh, at the January reorganization meeting not to give me the position of council president pro tem, uh, which is a position that he gets sworn in for. And, and I really wanted to see myself get sworn in. I, want, I wanted that picture with my children because I was really contemplating on getting out. And then he did the unthinkable. He broke tradition uh, because I didn't commit to saying I was going to support him. He didn't give me the position of council president pro tem, which always went to the most senior guy in council. It was like kind of like an honorable thing we had amongst ourselves that we wouldn't, so we wouldn't be fighting over it. We said always the most senior guy gets that position. So that let me out. That 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 led me down a path to. Uh, I, I said I'm going to run for council, a council president. And then uh, some of my closest people, my wife and some friends, uh, told me. Why are you going to parade through town running for council president? Just run for mayor. And so I put a team together, a running mate, a guy by the name of James Moore, um, uh, my wife, um, my 12-year-old daughter, and five of her friends. And we went about the business of running for mayor of Linden, New Jersey. And uh, at, the, at the end of the, of the evening, I got a call from my opponent congratulating me on my victory. We didn't even have, we didn't have enough people on staff to go down and count the, get the vote count from City Hall. Wow! So um, we, we won the primary. Real grassroots. Yeah. Very count. grassroots. No money. We beat we beat the organization with five thousand dollars, and and there was uh, close to one hundred sixty thousand dollars spent by the opposition by the machine. Um, but the story gets better because I go on to uh, that November. And thinking the Democratic organization was going to get behind me, and 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 they didn't. They, the cavalry just never showed up. But yet, yet we still won by 43 votes on the machines. But you have to remember, a lot of the Democrats, the old-time Democrats who uh, organization Democrats, didn't vote for me. And there was an absentee ballot campaign launched, and so I lost by 171 votes in that general election. So we fast forward to 2014, and uh, the Democratic Party approaches me, and now I'm the apparent front runner. And they tell me, okay, we're going to support you for mayor, but you can't run with your running mates. We have to pick your running mates. And uh, I told them, absolutely not. I said, either I'll win with my friends or I'll lose with them. So I decided to run again off the line. Uh, and knowing that it could be done, we did it. We, we, we did it. It was deja vu all over again. We ran off the line again and we won again. But this time uh, in 2014, you have to remember my council seat was up also. So it was do or die. So I had said that I wanted to get out of politics anyway, so it didn't really matter. So if I won, I I my wife said, what happens if you lose? And I, I told my wife, I said, well, then you win because you'll have me home every day. So um, I, uh, we, 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 we won the election in that, 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 that June. And this time we, we didn't wait for the Calvary to come rescue us. We just kept campaigning straight through until November. We didn't wait for the Democratic organization to get behind us full force. Uh, we kept campaigning. In fact, some of the literature they put out had everybody's name on it and they had my name blacked out. This is how ugly the race had gotten. I mean, the, the, the politics of the town had gotten, but somehow we still managed to, uh, to, 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 to prevail. And uh, in January of 2015, I became the first African-American mayor uh, of Linden. But it gets better. Yes. Okay. In 2018, they didn't support me again, and we ran off the line again in 2018, and we and we won again. Uh, we got, I think, a 73 percent of the vote during that election. Wow. Wow. I so could, that's I how we became mayor of Linden, New Jersey. So, so you're up again for for election next year. I'm up again next year. Okay. So we'll see what the Democratic organization wants to do. If they want to spend a lot of money again, because God knows they've been spending a lot of money trying to keep me from uh, winning, but somehow we prevail. The, the interesting thing here is that when I first took office in 2015, we have an 11 member council. Um, of the 11 members, uh, 10 of them were working against me and I had an, only one with me. So uh, we had to continue our campaign, even though I, I wasn't up for office, I had to keep running and running candidates until I could, could achieve the majority. And, uh, and, and as we stand there, I have seven uh, and they have uh, four. Um, 
I've only, I think there's only one, only one attempt to, to, to defeat a candidate of, of the opposition where we were unsuccessful. So we succeeded every election except for one. And that was because of COVID and people that were voting absentee ballot and they were just, just going right down the line with the Democratic organization. How many, how many people, how many citizens do you have in the town of Linden? Approximately 42,000. 42,000, okay, all right. We're so, in, we're in, the, the town is 10 square miles um, and 4.5 square miles of it is, is residential, the rest of it is industrial. Okay. Well, I, I go through Linden, New Jersey all the time. Uh, I've been through your town for the last, I would say 20 years I've been coming through Linden, New Jersey. I know there's an airport there small yes. airport. I know you have, uh, unfortunately, a couple of cemeteries. Yes, right through the highway. Yeah. Prime uh, real estate. Yeah. Um, my sister's buried in one, my brother's buried in the other one. So uh, unfortunately, so I, I know your town very well. Both of my grandparents, both sets of grandparents are buried in, in, those, uh, in, in the cemeteries there. Okay. So listen, the Linden Police Department began deploying body armor technology for the use worn by plainclothes officers and uh, uniform officers. Can you tell us about the uh, body armor? You mean the body cams? Body cameras, yes. Yes, body yes. Cameras. Well, we were, in fact, the one of the first cities in the, in the state to, to, uh, to deploy the, the cameras. Uh, and um, there was uh, some grant money available, and we decided to take advantage of it. You know, you know we wanted to, one of the most important things you can have here in these towns is, uh, is accountability. And I think by uh, putting the body cameras, moving forward with the body cams, I think we were able to just demonstrate that we're willing to show the public that we're uh, with such a good force that we don't mind uh, being filmed and having everything on film. Okay, very good. That's good, good community relations. Uh, we're talking to, you're listening to Reaching Out, we're talking to uh, the mayor of Linden, New Jersey, Derek Armstead. Now, how has that helped deter and convict the body, uh, the body cameras? How does that help deter well, and convict? They, they add, uh, you know, first of all, what it does, if you, have, if you know you're being filmed and you're, even if you decided, if you're thinking about doing something in, in, inappropriate, you know it's going to be filmed. The other side of that coin is that, you know, we, we have several people sometimes um, who would complain and make allegations against our police officers that weren't true. So the body cams eliminate all that, okay? So you come to court, you can't say, well, the officer said this or the officer did that because it's right there on film, you know? And, um, and, I, and, I, and, and to my disbelief, some people have done it even though they, they're being filmed. And, uh, you know, when that footage comes out, you know, it, it, it tells the whole story. I mean, there's no, uh, you know, people lie, but, but film doesn't. Right. Cameras don't. right, 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 okay. So we mentioned the uh, fast food chains have become a hub em employment. What do we mean by that? Well, if you go to our, we, our, our, we call it Legacy Square, um, that would be the old General Motors property. Uh, you see that restaurants are coming in there. I, I'm, I'm not going to say it at an alarming rate, at a very pleasant rate. Uh, uh, we've got Taco Bell, we've got Panda Express. Uh, we got Freddy's frozen custard, uh, uh, frozen custard burgers. Um, we um, a Wawa is coming. Um, we just have all of a sudden the it's exploded in that particular development. Uh, fast food is, is they, they're coming. They want to be yeah. there. I mean, when you look at US one and nine, you the US one, that highway is uh, is heavily traveled. There are thousands of cars that go through there a day, and uh, and, I, and I think it's an ideal location. For, uh, for for fast food and uh, it's become like almost like a food court if you can you know put it in, in, in some sort of terms. Now now where is this located for those who are listening who are going to travel to New Jersey go down one and nine which is very popular and I I know I want to get something to eat and you have almost every fast food chain there. Imagine where is this hub? If you come down one and nine as soon as you cross over Wood Avenue cross over Style Street. As soon as you cross over Style Street, you look to your right, uh, and you'll see the, uh, the the Legacy Square, the development. And uh, you know we have Walmart there, and we have a number of other stores that are coming in. Um, and again, it was the old General Motors plant that had sat idle for years, and finally we um, were able to get a developer to come in and uh, 
and they're doing a great job there. Okay, all right. You you also have um, a Sonics there too, right? No, I think the Sonic. No, the Sonic is further down. Sonic is further, further down. down the other side of the highway. Okay, all right. Although we'd like them to come, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll talk that into existence. Good, 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 good. So, is there any similar effort to increase minimum wage for New Jersey, uh, Linden, New Jersey employees or workers? Y yes, there is. I mean, in fact, um, just last week, um, I called in um, our union representatives and, and uh, sat down with them, and we've taken our we call our, our lowest paid employees, who are the men who work on the back of our garbage truck. And I told them, I brought them in. I said, I can't with good conscience watch these men on the back of a truck work for $15 an hour. They work in the, on the, the hottest days of the year. They work on the coldest days of the year. Uh, they handle all kinds of garbage, you know. Uh, they smell all kinds of uh, garbage. I said, um, if I wouldn't put one of my sons in the back of a garbage truck for $15 an hour, I wouldn't expect anybody else to be in the back of a garbage truck for $15 an hour. So we increased their salary to $17 an hour uh, those of them who are making 15 and go to 17 this year, uh, and then next year they get another dollar. So the, the lowest uh, paid employee uh, here in town on, on the back of those trucks will be making $18 an hour, which I think is, uh, and I still don't think that's enough, but we have to, we're, we have to work within our budgets and our constraints. Uh, but I, but I, I, I just can't see where you can expect to get a good day's work out of a person making $15 an hour on the back of one of those trucks. Wow. And what, what brought you to this conclusion? You know, I think the flood had a lot to do with it. When I saw all the, the garbage out there and, and, and these guys were working around the clock uh, trying to remove this debris, uh, and it, much of it was moldy and smelly. And, uh, you know, again, you know, there were times this summer when it was so hot, I would step out of this office and it, I felt like I was walking into a sauna. I said, no way these men could be working out in these, in these conditions. And I would call on a DPW and say, send everybody home. We'll have to, if, if we have to get the garbage a couple of days later, we'll get it a couple of days later. But I'm not going to have people out there working in, in these uh, conditions, especially for that little bit of money. Wow. Uh, you, you know, you, you might be the most thoughtful mayor in the United States of America. I've never, not, I've never heard of a mayor just taking that much consideration for his employees that he would just say, you know, it's too hot, send everybody home. Well, I come from very humble beginnings, okay? You know, and I tell everybody, I'm just an ordinary guy who happens to be mayor. Uh, again, I, you know, I tell everybody, and people say, stop saying this. I said, I said, there's nothing special about me. I'm just an ordinary man who happens to be mayor. And, and, I, and I actually, I, I, I love my job. Uh, and part of being a good mayor is, first of all, if you don't love people, don't even, be, and I think that's what's wrong with politics today. Too many people are getting in for the wrong reasons. Now, if you don't love people, don't even get involved in this business. You know, you shouldn't. If you're here just because you want to advance yourself or promote yourself or do something, then you, you, you shouldn't be here. And that's what's wrong with politics today. You know, that's well said. I had that thought process today. I was saying that about some of uh, the people running for office now. And you, you summed it up well. If you, you don't have people's interests in mind, you're trying to promote yourself, you should not be in politics. You shouldn't. You really have no business here. And that's what's wrong. That's what's wrong with the whole world. Yeah. I mean, it seems like we can't even find come to consensus on anything. Uh, Republicans and Democrats, if you say potato, I just got to say potato. It just, there's just no way that we can come to, to a consensus and do things right anymore. And it's very disheartening when you think about it. Right, right, right. Well, there's hope. There's hope in you. You know, I saw something special when I when I came out to Linden, New Jersey. You were out there. You You had your camera. You were filming the event, you were enjoying it with the people, you were walking around, you were you were dressed like everybody else. And if I didn't know you were up on the stage and, and I, I came there saying, the mayor has to be here. And I looked and I said, well, he's gotta be the mayor because I'm looking, he's up on stage and he's the one that's just filming. And when you came up, I introduced myself and I said who I was and I told you I wanted to bring you on the show and you right away gave me your number and it was just like, you didn't know me from anybody. You didn't know if I was telling you the truth or not, but you you said, you know what? I'm going to trust him. I'm going to give him the number and let's see where it goes. Well, you know, I, I especially when it comes time to some, a little bit of media coverage, I, I think it's very important 
Uh, people need to know this story, what happened here in Linden, New Jersey. <laughs> they need to know this story. Uh, you have to uh, understand the kind of resistance that was put forth to keep me from getting here. Uh, and, and I think uh, maybe because of that resistance, I want, I, maybe I worked that much harder because I think that people were saying, oh, he's going to fail. He's not going to do a good job. But I, I knew from the very beginning, I had spent enough years on council and I know the budget, to, how these towns are run. I know where the money's at. I know where the skeletons are hidden. I said, I knew when I took, when I took office, I said, the moment I get a majority on council, I'm going to start lowering taxes. And um, I, I take this job very serious. Um, and again, uh, I, I, I don't, if I have an opportunity to get a little press, I'm going to take it because people need to hear this story and they need to hear that there's something going on here in Linden uh, where we're lowering taxes. We're in our fifth year of lowering taxes here. I ran candidates for the Board of Education. They, I, 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 I have one requirement of them. Just don't raise taxes and I'll support you. Continue, make sure our kids are getting a good education, but don't spend money because you have it. Spend it because you need to spend it, you know? And, uh, and so we've come in three years consecutively with uh, zeros on our Board of Education. Um, I'm on the Lyndon Roselle Sewage Authority. And wouldn't you know, guess how many years we come in there? Ever since I'm there, guess what? Zeros, no increases. So um, we're here to try to prove that, you know, you, you don't have to raise taxes. Uh, Mrs. Johnson and Mrs. Jones and Mrs. Wisnowski, I, I always cite these names because I know these names from my town. You don't have to tax them out of their homes. Because what happens to them is going to happen to us. I mean, right now we see we're making decent money. We're we're young. We can afford to pay our property taxes. But guess what happens when we get the, the, their age? All of a sudden, we're going to be into the we're going to be in the same situation, and we're going to have to move out of our beautiful out of our homes and maybe go south because we can't afford them anymore, or maybe even lose them. So, um, you know, there's a story to be told here, and that is. You can lower taxes in your towns. The, the first rule is that you have to want to lower them. Very good, very good. So listen, where do you see yourself in the next five years? What's, in, in what's the future of Linden, New Jersey? The future of Linden is bright. We've got a number of projects on the, on, on the uh, books right now. Um, we've, we've got, a, we've been, new, new construction and new development is going on all throughout the residential part of the town. Right near the Northeast Corridor, we have uh, 170 apartments that, that are near completion, um, uh, two, uh, 234 and another one. Um, we have, um, I think it's um, close to 200 in the third building. But we have apartments going up all over town. On St. George Avenue, we did 114 new units and, and people are coming in. Um, and uh, these are, we, we've used something called a pilot program, a payment in lieu of taxes, where we put these uh, the tax payments on a graduated scale, and it, it gives the developers an opportunity to make uh, to make good deals into good contracts with deal with, with the banks, and um, so the town is moving forward. Um, we have some other good things on the, on the horizon as, as, as well. We have we're going to be we have 4.5 million square feet of warehousing under construction right now in one location, and uh, two of the um, warehouses are complete, uh, with the other two scheduled to be complete next uh, next year. Um, and a, a final, a fifth and final one of uh, the following year. But um, it's going to be the largest warehousing housing district on the, on the East Coast, 4.5 million square feet of warehousing with additional warehousing being planned uh, throughout the rest of the town. So uh, we have um, a company called RNG Energy coming into town. Uh, RNG Energy is going to be processing food waste and making it into, into a natural gas byproduct uh, and also making like a, a, an agricultural product of, a compost. So we have a lot of stuff in, uh, going on in town, and I think Lyndon is really on the right track. Uh, and when he's, when this money starts coming, I'm really going to be able to lower taxes. Wow. So listen, feel free to invite me to anything you have over there, because uh, I like to make Lyndon my second home. Well, and I will definitely see you at the next house festival because I had a wonderful time. Well, are, are you going to be in Atlantic, in Atlantic City this year? Uh, I wasn't planning on it, but if it's, it's, convention. Something, it's a convention in Atlantic City, the, the, the annual league of uh, municipalities convention is every year in November. It was canceled last year, but this year they're going to uh, be back. So, uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. So, uh, that's all the time we have for reaching out in this segment. Our very special guest was the mayor of Linden, New Jersey. Remember that name, Derek Armstead. Thank you very much for coming on, reaching out. 
Gregory, thank you for having us. You're very welcome.